EVAs. And on flight day five during EVA one, uh, we will transfer some racks to uh, the node three or to the gem, uh, the keyboard module, so that these activities won't interfere with the robotics workstation, which is located in the US lab or in the cupola. Talk about, if you would, the advantage of, of being able to use the cupola to do mm -hmm. robotic work. How, how, what, what's the advantage of that? Yes, the cupola's advantage is its, uh, it's wide views through the windows. Usually we use the camera views to operate a robotic work, robotic arm. We use three monitors and sometimes in addition to the three monitors we use two additional monitors to see all the clearances. But in Cupola we can see directly through the windows so it has a very huge advantage. Okay. If, if, if you would to uh, the MPLM for people who may not be f familiar with what it mm -hmm. is, um, give us your, your best description of it, of, oh. of what it looks like, how big it might be, mm -hmm. How it's shaped? Yes. Uh, Leon, uh, Leonardo is one of the three MPLMs European Space Agency has built. It is about 21 feet long and 15 feet in diameter, and it weighs 4.5 tons when empty. And it can carry about six tons of supplies to the space station. And it has a great capability to bring back uh, some equipment uh, back to the Earth as well. We are approaching the scheduled end of the space shuttle mm -hmm. era. Um, it, it evokes certain emotions from, from certain mm -hmm. people who've been involved with the space program mm -hmm. and, and with the shuttle or who just have uh, lasting memories. What, what does the, the the uh, possibility of the shuttle mm -hmm. coming to an end mean to you? Well, it means a lot to me. Space shuttle is a, has been a symbol of all the hard work and the dedications of engineers and astronauts and administrators who have been involved in this program. So uh, I think we should celebrate its accomplishment and at the same time we have to keep the dream of space alive. Do you have any space shuttle memories that you could share with us? And, and if so, uh, tell us why those moments made such an impact on you. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, the memories of the space shuttle I remember is related to Japanese astronauts. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, almost 17 years ago, uh, Mamoru Mori flew on a space shuttle for the first time as a Japanese. And then uh, Chiaki Mukai uh, flew uh, twice on a space shuttle. And the last one was uh, with John Glenn. Mm -hmm. And also Koichi Wakada flew uh, on a space shuttle uh, to the space station. And also he was the first crew member on the space station long duration expedition crew member. And also Soichi Noguchi was on the return to flight mission. And uh, Takao Doi did the first EVA as a Japanese. And Aki Hoshide uh, brought uh, the main keyboard module onto the space station. So all these space shuttle memories uh, meant to me a lot and inspired me a lot to uh, do a better job during the training. How, how do you imagine that the space shuttle might be remembered in a future where mm -hmm. space travel between worlds mm -hmm. um, has become as commonplace as airplane travel is mm -hmm. today on Earth? Yes, the original purpose of the space shuttle uh, was uh, as a shuttle or as a transport system back and forth like an airplane. and. When uh, we travel between wars, uh, like we travel between countries now, uh, the transportation system will be like a shuttle type system. So the original purpose of the space shuttle will be uh, replicated. 
And in that way, I believe the space shuttle will be always remembered in the future. Hi, I'm Bob Ben Chadler. I'm a scientist at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center. I study ice, I'm a glaciologist, and I've been doing it here for almost 30 years and having a great time doing it. West Antarctica. Pine Island Glacier drains into an ice shelf, and the satellite data tell us that that's the spot. That's the spot where the ice is thinning very rapidly. It's doubled its speed in less than 10 years. Right now, it's moving a foot an hour. This ice is racing into the ocean faster and faster, and we need to know why. We have to go there. Okay, we're gonna start now. Two months ago, I was able to stand on the ice shelf. There was debate in our community. You can't even land on the ice shelf. It's too heavily crevassed. But again, with satellite imagery, we were able to identify a spot that we thought we could land. And we did. We're in the sweet spot on the ice shelf, about the only place you can land. That was the good news. The bad news was the surface was so hard that the airplane, uh, airplane pilots were not willing to land again and again and again with, with heavy cargo loads. So we couldn't put our camp on the ice shelf. Because we couldn't land on the ice shelf, what we were going to do, we still had some instruments. We set these instruments.